Well, that was awkward silence. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. Um, speaking of awkward silences, I, I want to just, let's talk about silence. So many of our lives have just so much noise and so little silence that I think we're missing something as a culture. Years ago, Pope Benedict XVI, he said that God's first language is silence. But think about this. Think about when was the last time you ever had any kind of sense where you actually chose to enter into silence and didn't distract yourself by introducing noise? What was the last time when you entered into silence and didn't then just kind of at some point have the, okay, the awkward silence and so then you had to just say something, do something, distract yourself by some kind of noise, whether that's actual noise, like audible noise, or visual noise, or just kind of mental noise. But God's first language is silence because God speaks in silence. You know, it's, it's actually in silence that God reveals himself. I used to grow up thinking like, you know, I'd hear about these saints who had, you know, actual audible messages from God, that God would speak to them. I think, okay, that's what it is to pray. To pray is to enter into this time of prayer and God would just actually speak. And then realizing, wait, 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 that sometimes happens. But God's first language is to reveal himself through silence. Not only reveals himself in silence, he also reveals ourselves to ourselves in silence. God reveals us to ourselves in silence. I mean, think about it, that's, that's one of the reasons why we don't like it. To be, uh, we don't like it to be quiet. In fact, um, we used to have a lot of students who would come to our holy hour every morning. We have a you know, holy hour every morning here on campus. So it's a, basically an hour of silence, an hour of silent adoration uh, in front of Jesus in the Eucharist. And there are so many students who come to me, they're super perplexed afterwards, like, I don't know what's going on. I go into adoration and I'm just so mad, Father, like, w what's happening? Should I not go? <laughs> like, no, keep going to adoration. Or I go into adoration, Father, and like, I have these crazy thoughts, like, these kind of like these feelings of lust and these thoughts of lust, like, should I just not go? Should I avoid prayer because I think I have these crazy thoughts when I'm in prayer? Should I just not go? No, no, keep going. My Father, I go into prayer and all these things, I'm, I'm, I have this anxiety or this fear and maybe I should just avoid going to prayer because I think that prayer is causing me to have these thoughts of anger. The prayer is causing me to have these thoughts of lust. The prayer is causing me to have all these anxieties and these fears. So, no, calm down. The silence, the prayer is not causing those things. Silence is a great magnifier. What silence does is silence reveals what's already in our heart. Silence exposes, remember, silence reveals us to ourselves. And so when you go into prayer and you have that time of silence and you realize, man, I've got this anger because usually I'm distracted from the anger, but now in silence I can't distract myself from the fact that my heart has a bunch of anger in it. Or I, um, in, in silence, I find myself thinking about all my possessions, thinking about wanting to get more possessions. Well, that's not because silence is creating that. Silence is simply revealing that. Whatever is in my heart gets exposed and magnified in silence. And I think that's one of the reasons why we don't like silence because we don't want to have to deal with the stuff that's going on in our lives. In fact, Blaise Pascal was this, you know, 16th century uh, philosopher, math mathematician, whatnot. Um, he's a Christian Catholic man uh, and he had said this. He said, all of humanity's problems stem from man's inability to sit by himself in a room for one hour. All of humanity's problems stem from our inability to sit by ourselves for one hour in silence. No, again, that's a, that's a pretty big statement. But to say, like, wait a second, is there any truth in that statement? Do I have the ability to just sit in silence and just actually think my own thoughts? Do I have the ability to sit in silence and actually feel my own feelings? That's one of the reasons why we distract ourselves all of the time. I don't, I don't want to think my own thoughts. I don't want to feel my own feelings because then what happens to happen is then I have to deal with those things. I have to deal with those thoughts. I have to deal with those feelings. And so I want to avoid those feelings and thoughts by distracting myself. And yet, what would happen? What's the worst that would happen if you entered into silence, specifically silence in prayer? Let those things come to the surface and then invited God into them. Man, Lord, I have so much fear in my heart. I just, I didn't realize it was so, so powerful and so strong and so paralyzing. Okay, God, um, it's there, so I'm inviting you into this fear. Reveal it and reveal yourself. God, I have, this, I have these crazy thoughts of lust and I don't know what to do with them. Okay, God, okay, they're coming to the surface. You, I'm inviting you into them. Like, reveal what's going on. What's beneath this? Because it's not that. It's some other kind of brokenness, some other kind of wound, some other kind of something going on. I have so much anger. Okay, let that come to the surface. God, come into the anger here. 
I'm not sure what to do with this. So many of us spend too much time distracting ourselves, even in prayer, so we tell God the things we think he wants to hear, rather than the things that we need to invite him into. We tell God about all the stuff that's going on in our daily lives, instead of like actually letting what's really in the depth of our heart be exposed, revealed, magnified, so we can say, okay, God, that's what's really going on. Okay, come into this. Help me make sense of this. Come in and heal this. You know, one last thing that uh, silence does, uh, what silence is, I guess, maybe say, silence is boring. Not just in prayer. I'm mean, talking about like the rest of your, you know, the rest of our days. Um, I'm making some, uh, making some supper. So what do I need to do? Well, I need to put on an episode of whatever on Netflix. Or I'm making some supper. I'm going to put a YouTube on, blah, blah, blah. You know, this kind of thing. I'm going to put Ascension Presents on and watch myself talk. Um, that's not true. I'm just <laughs> making that up. But how many times I'm doing something so I'm going to listen to music. I'm doing something so I'm going to listen to a tutorial. I'm doing something so I'm going to have something to distract myself from the moment. Here's something interesting when it comes to boredom. My parents, my mom and dad would always say this whenever we were kids, you know, a summer break or whatever. We'd say, Mom and Dad, this is so boring. My mom and dad would always have one response. They'd say, things aren't boring, people are. Things aren't boring, people are. And if I find myself unable to be creative on my own, unable to think my own thoughts, unable to feel my own feelings, unable to, in some ways, be bored and then let creativity come out of that boredom, to be bored and let the Lord speak in that boredom, to be bored, and in that bore, boredom, in that silence, to let something incredible happen, I might be short-circuiting the contribution I can make not only to the world in a big way, but to the moment, to the day. And critical ingredient for creativity is boredom. And a critical recipe and ingredient for boredom is a lack of distraction. And a critical recipe and ingredient for lack of distraction is silence. So, don't be afraid of silence. Get used to silence. Be drawn to silence because silence is God's first language where he reveals himself to us and reveals us to us. For all of us here at Essential Presents, my name is Brother Mike. God bless.